If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Amira and today I am doing the eyeshadow palette tag part two that was created by Patty Alonzo and Samantha March. I had not started my channel yet, I believe, when they did the original eyeshadow palette tag, so I don't have a video for that. If you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know down in the comments below, and I will certainly sit down and film that for you guys. Um, also, if you enjoy this video and you enjoy this channel, please make sure to like and subscribe. I am trying to reach my goal of a thousand subscribers by the end of March. So if you could help out, that would be fabulous. Um, let's get into the eyeshadow palette tag part two. First up is the all time favorite palette. And first palette that popped into my head. And so I figured that was probably the most genuine answer is my Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I've shown this on the on this channel a million times. You guys have seen this a million times. I'll show it again just in case. There she is. She's beautiful. Um, yeah, I I love this palette and I, I've always said it's one of my faves, but considering that it popped up when I looked at that particular prompt, I'm gonna say that it's 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 my fave because I do it's the first thing I think of when that when I hear all-time fave. This is the one that pops up. So yeah, this is not available anymore, unfortunately. And I really, I'm really sad about that because I know so many people were sort of on the fence about it who didn't weren't able to get their hands on it. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful palette. If you ever see it like on resale or something like that and you're still interested, pick it up. It's worth the money. It really is. Next up is New Favorite. And my new favorite uh, is a palette that I purchased relatively recently after eyeing it for a really long time. Um, and yeah, it is my NARS Climax palette. You guys have heard me talk about this and show it and I did an eye look with it and that's what it looks like. So stunning. Um, I really enjoy this palette and it, when I, again, when I saw that prompt, the first thing that popped into my head was this one. So I figured this was my most obvious and genuine answer and I've been using this a ton. I haven't been using it as much. I haven't been using much eyeshadow at all the past week, week and a half because I've been having dealing with some eczema on my eyelids. So today like I just did a little baby wing but when I was doing eyeshadow and when I get back to doing eyeshadow for like everyday makeup this is what I've been reaching for and really enjoying. Up is Keep for the Memories. I'm not an overly sentimental or nostalgic person but there is a palette in my collection that I keep because I just think it's so beautiful and it's not something that's easy to come by anymore. I actually got mine on resale. I didn't even buy it when it first came out. Um, but yeah, that is my Urban Decay Jean-Michel Basquiat palette in gold griot. They had two palettes. This is the one that is the more neutral one with the pops of blue. And it's like a yellow shimmer here. I love this palette. And the shadows still perform. Like I've used this relatively recently. Not like in the last like couple of months. But it hasn't been that long ago. And the, and the shadows still perform really nicely. It's a beautiful palette. And yeah, I just, I think the color story is pretty. And the packaging is stunning. Yeah, so I keep this um, for the aesthetics. Not only for the memories, but for the aesthetics. Yeah. Next up is underrated. And for this prompt I actually have a whole collection of palettes that I want to mention in this little in my answer because I feel like all of them function pretty similarly as far as um, quality goes but I feel like they're underrated because of sort of the way that they were released the fact that they're not the same formula as the mother brand and the fact that they're so large. And I'm talking about the ABH and Ravina palettes. Um, I do feel like these are underrated. I think the way that they came out, and if you remember how that whole thing went down, it was just, I think people were a bit overwhelmed. They felt bombarded and it kind of turned people off. Um, but taking that out of the equation and really looking at the palettes for what they are, the palettes are really good quality. I was shocked at how good of the quality, how good the quality was when I purchased the first one, which is I purchased volume one. I own volume one, volume three, and volume four. And I do plan eventually to pick up volume five um, once 
you know, sometime in the future, I want to know by right now. So that won't be happening anytime soon, but it's still very much on my to buy list. And I just feel like you get a lot of bang for your buck with these palettes. They're not cheap. They're $60, but you're also getting a crap ton of eyeshadow. And let me show you what this one looks like. So you, you're getting a ton of, of eyeshadow. Do you need all of these shades? Of course not. But one thing that I've been finding, I've been playing around a lot with duping the vibes of certain things, certain pal eyeshadow palettes. And I did uh, a video duping the vibes of the Rose Quartz palette. And this palette came in clutch. And I was shocked at how many dupes in this palette there were for that palette. And it kind of started making me think a little bit. And I was like, you know what? The way these color stories are done and the how many shades you get and the finishes and the formulas, you can dupe a lot of different palettes that are on the market with these palettes themselves. So I feel like just for that reason alone, they're kind of worth it. Um, and they're fun to play with. I find that I use these a lot for more um, like Halloween looks and editorial looks and things like that because there's so much, there's so many options in each palette. So yeah, I think overall these are underrated. Um, the, the formula is very different from the traditional Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, palette formula. Um, it's more firmly pressed. It doesn't kick up as much. I believe these are made in China while the OG ABH palettes are made in California. So there's a difference there, but I think they're they're good. I don't think they're as good as the original ABH palette, but I think they're really good quality, and I was actually quite surprised at how good the quality was. So yes, I believe these are underrated. Next up is not a fave, but can't get rid of. And I just did my eyeshadow palette collection declutter video, which should be up by now. It may not be. I don't know for sure. But if it is, then you know that I did not declutter this. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, I've had this forever. Um, it's just one of those palettes that I can't get rid of. It's not something that I think of a lot, but I still like it and I still want to keep it. And I do enjoy the palette. It's just one of those palettes that just, you know, when you sit down and do your makeup, it doesn't occur to you. I've done like a whole one week, one palette with this for myself and I got a lot of use out of it. I just, I can't get rid of it guys. I can't. I like the formula. I like the colors. It's just not like a standout, but I still feel like it has a place, you know? So yeah, can't get rid of that one. Faith collab. So I haven't purchased a lot of collabs in recent time as far as like <sighs> collabs in like influencers. I've purchased a lot of like well, not a lot. I've purchased a few collabs with brands and like IPs, but I really wanted to focus on collabs with people, like actual people. And so for me, when I thought about it in that way, the first thing that came to mind was the Kaleidos Club Nebula palette that they did with Angelica Nyquist. And it looks like this. I just think this is a beautiful color story. I'm really more into these mattes here. I don't ironically reach for a lot of these shimmers I really use a lot of this here this is like my jam this little section here and the formula is stunning I think she did a great job as far as the really rich deep and I know that Angelica really loves rich jewel tones and you can really see that in this palette but yeah I think it's a beautiful beautiful palette and I enjoy using it and I think it's a, a, a great collapsed up is the 2021 favorite I did my um I, well, it wasn't really a ranking video, but I talked about all of the palettes that I tried in 2021. And I said that if I were going to pick a favorite, it would probably be this one. And so to me, this was like the natural choice. Um, this is the Pat McGrath um, Holiday, Holiday 2021 palette, Celestial Odyssey. Looks like that. It's beautiful. I, I just... I was not into this palette. I purchased it to review. I was not expecting to love it as much as I do. And honestly, this palette could actually go for the next prompt as well. But I chose a different palette for that because I didn't want to do too many multiples. And I do have two palettes that fit the category. But this palette quickly became 
my favorite palette of last year because I just found myself reaching for it and I was shocked at how much I was reaching for it and how much I enjoyed using it and how many beautiful looks you can get out of it. It's a really beautiful, beautiful palette and I hope if you had your eye on it that you're able to get your hands on it. She had a huge sell, um, I think it was last month, so hopefully this was still in stock and you were able to get your hands on it at a decent price if you wanted it because I believe it is discontinued now. But it is definitely, I think, of all the palettes that I used last year, this is the one that I found myself going back to again and again and again and really coming up with really different unique looks each time I used it so yes 2021 fave next up is the prompt didn't expect to love and again I said that the Pat McGrath holiday palette could fit that category and it can but another palette that could fit it is the ABH Norvina palette this is an OG, but I didn't purchase it until September of last year. I had avoided it for, for a very long time, and I was very underwhelmed every time I see it. I'd just be like, whatever. But I was, I don't know what was going on on Instagram, but there were so many people who were posting looks where I was like, oh my God, that's stunning. And then I would look at the details of the products used, and this palette would be the palette that was used. And I'd just be like, why am I... Why don't I own that? And so when Ulta had their 21 Days of Beauty sale last September, I picked it up. And guys, I just, I don't know. I love it so much. It's so beautiful. The finishes are lovely. It's, it's just, I was shocked at how much I enjoyed using this. I also will say that when I'm in my recent eyeshadow palette collection and declutter video, I did all of my ABH palettes and forgot this one because it was sitting on my makeup desk out of sight and I, I forgot to mention this and I, I I got through filming and I was putting on my makeup away and I, it was sitting there going how you gonna feel good about me girl like ooh. so yes I still own this I still love it and I didn't expect to love it as much as I do the next prompt is palette that sparks joy and the first one that came to my mind was my Pat McGrath Subliminal. I know she looks boring. I, you know, I thought she was boring for a very long time. I talked shit about this palette for a really long time. I'm like, that palette is so boring. And then I purchased it and I get so excited to use this palette. When I decide that I want to play with it, I sit down and I'm just genuinely inspired. I'm genuinely excited. I've loved every single look I've created with this. It just... It just brings me joy. This palette is such a fun palette for me, and I know that it looks very basic on the surface, but once you really get in there and start using the different finishes and formulations, it is such a beautiful, beautiful, and actually quite cohesive palette and usable. Like, it doesn't look quite usable with, you know, it's like all of these neutrals and this pop of blue, but it, I'm telling you guys, it just works, and it's so fun to use. I love this palette. The next two prompts actually have the same answer. Um, the first um, prompt is newest palette in your collection and the first palette used in 2022. Now, as you guys know, I am on a no buy, so I haven't purchased any new palettes in the new year. Um, and honestly, even if I weren't in a no buy, there's really not a whole lot that I've been interested in that I would want to buy. Um, and that may change. Natasha Denona just previewed a palette and I'm kind of like, But she hasn't gotten me. She, I, I'm, I, I'm like, mm, it's cute, but mm, no. So I've only really had one palette that I've tried in that's new to me in 2022. And it's also the newest palette in my collection because it's the last palette that I purchased. I purchased it in December. And that is, again, my NARS Climax, guys. I'm not going to speak on it too much. I just talked about it. But yeah, it's this little dude. It's new to my collection, and it's the first palette I tried in 2022. So there you go. And that is my eyeshadow palette tag two video. If you are interested, again, if you're interested in me doing the OG palette tag, let me know in the comments below, and I will sit down and pull out some palettes and film that video for you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye now.